Hello YouTube! Welcome to my CoCovid video. If you looked at the guide, I'm supposed to be presenting a video on tintype photography with Dave from Victorian Photography Studio. But unfortunately, Dave got sick and that meant that we couldn't go out and film with him. Trust me, we tried. Oh, this is going to be really unflattering. I hate it. And yet, I'll still probably use it. Put me in a dress, will you? One of the most important parts before our trip, the walking up the dog. Seven outfits, all of your sh and still the full back seat for the dog. I rule. Ready for an adventure? On our way. <laughs> Hopefully he is on a quick path to recovery. Tested negative for COVID, so I promise we will definitely do that video later, but we couldn't really go out and film together. So when life hands you lemons, you make pineapples. So what do we know about pineapple reticules? Well, let's talk about the history of the pineapple. Pineapple, delicious tropical fruit or nature's perfect killing machine. Join us as we take a deep dive into the dark history of this troubled, spiky-haired menace. Where do they come from? Why so pointy? And who does live in this one? All of this and more coming up on this edition of Hardcore. No, not that history. Let's talk about the history of the knitted pineapple. So what do we know about pineapple reticules? Well, there is a beautiful example in the Kyoto Costume Institute, which in their book they dated circa 1800. And that's where everyone has derived this idea of them being a Regency fashion item. However, the problem with that is that there isn't any supporting evidence of that. I can't find any fashion plates, I can't find any written patterns that would date a pineapple to that period. I found several articles online about them, but they all link back to that original Kyoto Costume Institute reticule. There were patterns in periodicals in this period, but they're mostly for embroidery or tatting, lace making, that kind of thing. You don't really see the knitted reticule come into fashion until a little bit later in the early Victorian era. Obviously, I can't prove something didn't exist, but here's what I do know. There are later examples of printed patterns. We see several versions of this pattern pop up in the early to mid Victorian era. The very first example we have of a printed pattern is from the 1838 Ladies Guide to Knitting and Netting, what they refer to as a porcupine knitting for a purse. And they don't specify pineapple colors, and we do have some examples that are not in pineapple colors that have survived. This one that was sold on Ruby Lane is a lovely example in navy. The Met has a fun multicolored example. The V&A has a fun multicolored example. So there are definitely a few around that use the same pattern structure as the pineapple, just without pineapple colors. The first true example of the pineapple is in Jane Goggins, the lady's assistant for executing useful and fancy designs in knitting, netting, and crochet work, published in 1840. And again, it shows up in Le Mode Illustries in 1864. It wasn't really uncommon for pattern magazines and books to borrow from each other. In fact, it was really common for them to straight up plagiarize from each other. So I'm not surprised that we see the popularity of a pineapple pattern popping up repeatedly. So what other evidence do we have? Well, we have lots of examples of this specific stitch being used in lots of other mid 19th century things. So this is the 1864 Godey's Knitted Petticoat Pattern made up, made it a few years ago before Remembrance Day. And believe it or not, the lace edging at the bottom is actually the top of the pineapple pattern. This lace pattern uses the same uh, triple decrease and yarn overs to create a lace edging. It's just made flat. So this is the same stitch as the pineapple. I also found this nice extant example of a tintype where the woman's Sontag is edged with pineapple stitch. So this is an example that I made last year for my friend Katie. And you can see it's a narrow band 
of pineapple stitch where the same pineapple tops create that nice dagged edge and it looks really pretty on the edge of a Sontag. If you really feel like going for the gusto, my friend Catherine recreated this Talma, which is entirely made out of pineapple stitch. It's a lot of pineapple stitch. We also see a general increase in knitted accessories in the early to mid-Victorian era. Regency accessories don't tend to be knitted. We don't tend to see as many knitting patterns, and we don't have any surviving knitting books from this era. What we do have are, once you move into the 1840s, 1850s, and 1860s, a huge boom in knitted objects. You can find patterns in magazines and periodicals for socks, mitts, caps, knee warmers, real thing, I didn't make it up, mufflers, scarves, gloves, you name it, they knitted it. So it's really not uncommon for them to have a knitted purse pattern from that later period. In conclusion, while I can't prove that they didn't exist in the Regent Sierra, I also would argue that they're not really a Regency thing and that we would be better off to pair them with our later costumes. Show me some 1840s, 1850s with a delightful pineapple knitted reticule. I'm not going to stop using mine. I'm just probably going to shift when I use mine from the Regency period to a little bit later. Heck, I can use it all the way up to 1864. I'm going to start taking it to my mid-Victorian things. Full disclosure, I already did as I don't have that many reticules. The next question is how do you make a Regency knitted pineapple reticule? So let's go up to my sewing desk and take a look at some footage I have of how I made mine. Okay, so I think this is probably actually too small to really be a useful example, but I did want to show you what it looks like when you're knitting in the round on smaller needles. You use double pointed needles so that you can just keep going in a continuous circle. I suppose you could use the circular if you can find a small enough one. But here's a better example of the actual pattern. You start with a knit stitch, do a yarn over, and then you're gonna plain knit six stitches. Then we're gonna slip one stitch knit two together from the front and we're going to pass the slip stitched over the top and that's the most complicated part the triple decrease we're going to knit six more stitches plain then it's a yarn over knit one yarn over start the whole thing over again so this is just a few rows but you can already see how it's creating the frond pattern of the pineapple. So to do an example like this flat where you would use it as a lace edging, you would just purl all the way back across the back. And then you just have to do this several hundred more times. I wish I could really knit this fast. I would like to take a minute to thank my friend Catherine whose idea led to this entire video. So this is the pineapple that I've actually been making as my quarantine stress knitting project. They're deceptively simple if you can figure out how to do a knit, a purl, a yarn over, and a triple decrease that I promise is really easy. You knit two, you slip one stitch, knit two together, pass the slip stitch over. You can do all of this. Uh, they actually go pretty quickly and it's the same pattern, the same number of stitches makes the fronds at the top and the nubs at the bottom. The only difference is when you're making the nubs every five rows, you switch and do the pattern opposite. Offsetting the pattern like that creates these little raised bumps. Hey baby, wanna rub my nubs? And one of the interesting things about it is that when you're working on the nubby part of the pattern, it's worked inside out. So this is what it actually looks like on the outside. And this is a non-beaded example. It's kind of really ingenious in how complex it looks while being extremely simple. So for an update on how Dave's doing, let's go to Dave.
Well, I'm glad you're feeling better, Dave. So enjoy the rest of CocoVid. Uh, I know it's almost over by the time we post this video, but there's lots of content that you can still watch on YouTube. It's all still up there. I encourage everyone to make one. You don't even have to make it in pineapple colors. We've seen examples of all kinds of fun multicolors and in blue. And if you do make one, tag me in it. I'd love to see it. My one year YouTube anniversary is in August and I'm gonna finish this and do it as a subscriber giveaway. So please be sure to subscribe, like this video, and stay tuned because I promise Dave from Victorian Photography Studio and I will do our tintype video as soon as he's recovered from the plague. All right, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of CoCovid. Pineapple, controversial pizza topping, and neither pine nor apple. What is it hiding?